I used to live in Missouri when I was younger. I was living with my grandparents because my parents were too busy to see me through school and all that. During my time in high school, I used to spend some nights at my friend's house. I never thought about my grandparents having someone break into the house, but I guess you never do expect it. There was a nearby trailer park that didn't house old folks, if you know what I mean. I'm sure you do. I went to my friend's house on Friday because they invited me for dinner and to stay the whole weekend. My grandparents were the type of people to go to bed at 7pm, and that's all it took. We didn't have cameras or barely any technology in the house, other than a landline phone and a TV with bunny ears. Security cameras were pretty much out of the question with them. It was the cold months, so we weren't running the AC as much. But we had one of those central ones that only one person controls and it kills the rest of us. During my stay at a friend's house, I had a great time. Everything was perfect until I got home. I used to go into the house from the side door by the garage and into the kitchen because the house is set up stupid. I didn't notice anything was wrong at all. My grandparents didn't usually go to that side of the house either, unless it was to cook, and then the dining room was pretty much on the other side of the house. Like I said, very stupid layout. It wasn't until I got up for school Monday that I noticed it missing. The AC unit that was just outside was gone, and that caught me off guard. I was running late and my grandparents were already out doing things, so it wasn't like I could tell them. I would have to skip school to stay and wait for them to decide to get back. That would probably have gotten me in trouble, so I just waited until I got home to tell them. When I got home from school, I told them right away. Their first reaction to the information was, Why didn't you tell us sooner? Very rude. Maybe you guys should have noticed yourselves. They called the police to report it, and my grandfather expected the police to just glance at the crime scene and know who the person was that ran off with the whole unit. I don't think that's how it works. I knew that even then. So nothing was done about it, and they didn't have any type of insurance that would cover this type of thing. So what did we do? We lived without AC for a long time. The damage from whoever it was that stole the unit, though, was fixable, but they didn't just tear the unit out. They also hit the side of the house with a vehicle and made a hole in the wall. My grandfather didn't fix that for like five years and just stuck a shelf there to hide it. I don't know about them, but I was afraid of it happening again at some point. Let's be honest, we all know what this sounds like. Someone from the trailer park nearby got the itch and saw an AC unit in someone's yard. They probably came over at night while I was gone and wanted the copper out of it to scrap. You know why. My grandparents being older, they wouldn't have heard the noise being made on the other side of the house like that. What was worse for me was that I was afraid to leave the house, seeing that if it happened once, it could happen again and someone could just steal everything in the house, and my grandparents could have gotten hurt, or worse. I don't fear that now because I'm on my own since they're both gone now, and I live in a different place. But that incident is always in the back of my mind. It was pandemic time, and I was locked in the house for what seemed like an eternity. I'd stocked up on a few months worth of things, and my job had me working from my home office. I was content with that, but after a while, I just wanted to go outside and do things. Aside from that, sitting in the house all the time, I really only saw three rooms. The kitchen, the bathroom, and my bedroom. My office and my bedroom were the same, of course, since that just made it easier on me. I had a basement, garage, and living room. But I was there by myself most of the time, so I didn't go into those rooms. My nephew had just lost his home, so he was on his way to come stay with me. I told him it could be permanent if he wanted it to be, since he was moving so far away. It didn't end up being permanent, but he was welcome. 
When he got there and settled into the second bedroom that I had, he started hearing noises. Day or night for about a week, there was movement and bumping going on in the room below his. We both thought it was the rats wrestling in the basement, and when we went down there to go check, we would spook them and they would stop. We didn't see anything down there at a glance, so we never actually went down there and checked. The lights went off one afternoon as we were watching TV and trying to eat dinner. There was a really bad rainstorm, but honestly, it only takes a small wind blowing to knock the power out. My nephew said that he would go and flip the breaker downstairs since he knew where it was at. A few moments later, he came back spooked himself and told me that he saw someone in the basement. He didn't even get to flip the switch back on before he was back up in the living room. This immediately freaked me out, and I thoughtlessly went into the basement to go check why there was someone in there. I found him, but he seemed extremely passive. He looked like a homeless guy that you would see in a movie. He wasn't rude or anything when I woke him up and told him to get out of my house. He just didn't. He just responded with, No, oh, man. He also didn't seem like he was all there. I told him he needed to get out before I called the cops. He either didn't understand what that meant, or he acted like he didn't care and continued to lay down in the filthy corner of my basement. I said, Okay, have it your way. Then I walked back upstairs, not turning my back on him, in case he was waiting for that. He did nothing. Upstairs, I called the cops. They were right over, and removed him from the house. The weirdest thing that he was cawing. That's right, he was cawing like a crow. I think that told me everything that I needed to know. After all that was said and done, we checked the whole house and couldn't find a single place that he could have gotten in at. It was almost as if he faced through the wall or something. I keep the doors and windows locked and I don't make mistakes like forgetting to do so. There's just no way he could have slipped in while I was home. That makes me wonder how long he had actually been there. My nephew joked and said that now that my other roommate was gone, he could move into the best room in the house now. I told him half-jokingly that if he wanted the basement, he could have it. He had plans to move out of state anyways, so that didn't happen. After having someone there as long as he stayed, I got used to having the company around. But once he moved out, I could only think about how silent it was unless I was actively working on something. I also made a habit out of checking every single room in the house every now and then because I was a little bit paranoid about someone else slipping back into the house. When you know that you should be alone, the worst thought is that you aren't. Back in 2012, I had something horrible happen. I'd just gotten this new apartment and the landlord was one of those everything is your fault sort of people. I didn't have a choice though. I was fresh out of college and I needed some place to stay that was cheap until I could upgrade. This was also my fault. Anyways, I started working down the street at a mom and pop shop that they told me that they would pay me more than the local McDonald's. I liked the sound of that, so I went to work for them. The owner and his wife were very nice people, and they deserved the world. They helped me when I needed it the most, and I'll always remember them. They didn't want the world, though. That was fine, too. All they wanted was a nice, peaceful business on the edge of town, and not to be bothered by people who were looking for trouble. That's, of course, what they got, though. This guy came into the shop one day as I was helping the old man do something in the back and the guy started putting things from the store into his pockets. Like, dude, we can see you. You're not even trying to hide it. I told the old man that I'd take care of it. I ran out to the floor to tell the guy that he's on camera and to remove the stuff from his pockets. He told me that he didn't have anything in his pockets, and he straight up had a bottle of soda hanging out of his pocket. 
I pulled it out because I saw him pull it out of the fridge and put it in his pocket. He claimed that he brought the soda in himself, and I told him that I saw the whole thing. So he started angrily taking things out of his pockets and chucking them at me, and then walked out of the store. I wasn't going to chase after him since he removed the stuff in his pockets. The old man was pretty shocked to see someone walk into his store and do that though. He said that he had never had that happen in the whole 10 years that he had had the store open. That was actually impressive. Well that night I went back to my apartment to crash because I was dead tired. The next day I went to work and everything was nice and chill. The whole day was great. That was until I got home. The apartment had been broken into right through the front door. Someone did this in broad daylight, facing a kind of busy street. That was bold for sure, but when I walked inside, my stuff was all over the place and destroyed. I didn't have much stuff in the apartment, but by the way it was ransacked, it looked like I'd filled the apartment to the brim with stuff. Whoever it was broke a window and put holes all in one of the walls, removed the bathroom door from its hinges, and left the fridge open after ripping everything out of it. Nothing I could really see was taken, but the whole place was a huge mess. I called my landlord and told him about the damages which he 100% blamed on me. I'll get back to that later. I spent that night cleaning up my apartment, but I was on edge the whole time thinking at any moment the intruder could come back and do more damage. They didn't, but I didn't sleep well at all that night because of that. I went to work that morning dead tired, and the old man told me to get a nap in the back, but I couldn't and didn't want to sleep. I told him what happened, and he said he bet it was the guy from the other day. I had never considered that. I did live down the street, and he could have easily followed me home. I didn't know that he did, but it sounded like a very good possibility. I felt like I needed to go home and stronghold my apartment. My anxiety was through the roof, and I couldn't focus on working and doing what I needed to do. I was a mess that whole day, and the old man kept telling me to go home and make sure that I was safe. But anxiety took over and made me think that I was just going to find the worst when I got home. Well, it wasn't wrong either. When I got home, there was a huge paint splatter on the front of the apartment, and the door handle was missing. I found it in the yard. I was reluctant to tell the landlord about this, since he was just going to say it was my fault, and that I'd have to pay for it. I did though, and he followed suit. I just wasn't going to pay for it because I didn't damage it. He did say he was going to up my rent and make me pay for it, and I moved out later instead. Meanwhile, back at the small shop, someone had broken into it too. Luckily, we had his face on camera, and he was too stupid to wear a mask or something. It was the same guy from the other day like the old man had said. I think that was more than enough confirmation that he also broke into my apartment without further investigating and concrete answers for me. We called the police and showed them the video. They knew who he was. He was a local user that caused problems elsewhere and he had been arrested multiple times for very petty things like this. Well now he was going to have to pay for damages that he did because he knocked over two shelves and threw things around. He didn't make as much of a mess in the store than he did my apartment, but it was about the same thing. I told the police that he had also done that to my apartment down the street, but they couldn't do anything about that since they couldn't prove that it was him. I guess that's understandable since there's no cameras anywhere near my apartment, so I get it, but it's kind of stupid how cut and dry the law is sometimes. The landlord came by to harass me a few days later about the damages and how I was going to pay for them. I told him that I was moving out as soon as possible and to go fuck himself. I didn't want to be mean to him or anything, but if he wasn't going to understand that none of that was my doing, he can go cry in a bowl of salt water. 
Apparently the old man and his wife had a guest bedroom that they said that I could use, and they didn't want me to pay much for it. I took them up on their offer. Living with them was great, and I could actually relax there since the landlord from the previous place never bothered with trying to get the money out of me that I didn't owe him. As for the guy who broke into the store and my apartment, the police knew where he was staying and went at him. Apparently he got jail time for what he did, but the old man didn't want to press charges since he just didn't have the energy to deal with it. I fully understand. As long as the guy didn't come back, we were all good. And he didn't. We also didn't have any more problems at the store caused by break-ins, but we did have a few angry people come in with attitudes. I'd much rather deal with them than what we all went through. Break-ins are never fun to deal with, and you should always at least have some sort of protection, whether that be whole security systems or a small Wi-Fi cam while you're out. In 2012, I don't believe that you could just get a cheap Wi-Fi cam like you can in 2023. But there were options. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?